Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. So good to see each one of you. I'm excited about our study today on being strong and courageous. It was, those words were used in Joshua's life in a powerful way. And there is so much that we can learn from the preparation of Joshua's life and the call on his life to what God is calling us in our lives. We're going to start our study in the book of Exodus. If you would go to Exodus 17. (coughs) You know that God made a promise to Abraham that he would make him the father of many nations. He made that promise before Abraham even had one child. So knowing God always involves trusting God. Trust is a necessary component of us having a relationship with God because the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, we will not always understand God's plan. We will not, we will rarely know God's plan, much less understand what he's doing because his ways are so far beyond us. The Bible says to trust the Lord with all our hearts and not lean on what? Our own understanding. Well, we know that eventually God calls a people out of Egypt through a mighty servant named Moses. And they head out of Egypt, and we get to chapter 17 and verse 8. And it says, The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. And so Joshua fights the Amalekites, and you know the story. They held Moses' hands up because every time his hands went down, they started losing. So they hold his hands up, and verse 13 says, So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Now, Joshua wasn't the only one out there. There were more men than that. However, the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure Joshua hears it. In other words, make sure you read it to Joshua. I need for him to know this because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Read it to him. God had chosen Joshua for a very special job. One that Joshua wouldn't know about right now. It would be a long time coming. However, God always prepares us today for the work he's going to have us do tomorrow and next week and next year. We never walk into anything without the preparation that God gives. And so it is so important that we understand that God operates differently than we do. God doesn't do things on the fly. God doesn't come up with things at the last minute. God is very purposeful and orderly and prepared. And you and I have to trust when we don't know what God is doing. Now, the reason that God said this about about the Amalekites was that they had come, Deuteronomy 25 tells us that the Amalekites came up behind the Israelites as they've come out of Egypt. And the ones that were really tired and weary and were lagging behind, they attacked those. And they did that because they had no fear for God. Here's a people that have been led across dry water. And they, the stories about what God had done to Pharaoh and his army were just spreading. And these Amalekites 
have the nerve to go and attack people that are tired and weary from doing a lot of walking. And God was very angry, and he made a pledge that the Amalekites would be destroyed. Y'all can mark, if you want to cross-reference your Bible, Deuteronomy 25.17, if you want to read that later. So let's go over a couple of uh, chapters to Exodus 24, the next time that we see Joshua. And Joshua becomes the aide of Moses. He goes up with, um, let's, let's just read it, 24, 12. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay here. I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commands I have written for their instruction. Then Moses set out with Joshua, his aide, and Moses went up on the mountain of God. He and Joshua go up the mountain, so Joshua becomes his aide. So God is teaching Moses. God is also teaching Joshua, and he's teaching the Israelites because God always has things going everywhere. He's not only teaching Moses here. He is teaching the Israelites down at the bottom of the mountain patience, which we come to find out they didn't choose to have. And he is teaching Joshua because he is going to give Joshua a huge task, monumental task. And so always when God is doing anything in our life, our job is to say yes. There's never any response from Joshua that's recorded that he was unhappy with whatever he was asked to do. He was totally respectful of Moses. And in fact, we know the story of the spies that he's one of the two that were faithful because he took to heart everything that God was doing. He had witnessed all of the things that had happened to them in in their journey to the promised land. Let's move over to uh, Numbers 13. I just want to set the stage for Joshua, before we actually start in the book of Joshua this morning, let's talk about one of the things that Joshua is infamous for in Numbers 13. We know that they're about to go into the promised land, finally. They reach the place, and they're going to be sent. Now, Numbers 13 says, the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land. But actually, the people wanted spies to go check out the land. This is just referring to that God said, go ahead and do it. It's kind of like when they said, we want a king, we want a king. Go ahead, give them Saul. God goes ahead and lets them have what they want. And this sets things up to be nothing but trouble. Number one, they didn't need anyone to go spy out the land. God said, I am going to give you this land. Had they not witnessed mighty miracles by God? Did they not already know with their own eyes? Had they not already seen the kind of power that God had and what he could accomplish on their behalf? So what what's over there? God just parted the Red Sea for you. Walk through it. He's feeding you with manna. He's sustaining you as a cloud at night and, and as, at, during the day and as a fire by night. There shouldn't have been a reason to go and send spies out to see what's over there because what was over there was going to be beyond what they could handle with their own eyes, with their own hearts. However, we know that one important thing here in Numbers 13, 8 is that Moses changes his name. His name is Hosea, son of Nun. Moses changes his name, here in verse 17, he changes his name to, or 16, he changes his name to to Joshua. He's going to have a different experience. God sees this as a changing point in Joshua's life. And so we know the story. They go off and they see what's out there. And Joshua And Caleb say, what is over there is no problem. 
we can take them because God is going with us. Look at verse uh, chapter 14, verse 6. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jeph- Jephune, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes when they came and said, We can't do it. There's just no way. And he said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the assembly talked about stoning them. So what does God do? Verse 29. In this desert your bodies will fall. Every one of you, 20 years old or more, who was counted in the census, who has grumbled against me, not one of you will enter into the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb and Joshua. For as your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land that you have rejected. But you... Your bodies will fall in this desert. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the desert. For 40 years, one year for each of the 40 days that you explored the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken And I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community. Take note of what they did. They banded together against me. God was very displeased at their lack of trust. He had taken them out of Egypt by his own power, provided for them, told them, I am going to take you into this land. And they totally distrust God after witnessing mighty power. One thing that that tells us is that just because we see a miracle, that does not change anyone's heart. Because to the carnal heart, we see something great today and tomorrow, eh. We want to see something greater today. So those that are clamoring to see miracles, miracles don't change anything. They do not bring us to humility and repentance, which is where we need to be. In fact, they didn't have humility and repentance. They mourned and they bellyached. Oh, we're really sad that that happened. We're going to go now. God had said, you're not going. Because you know the story. They decide to get up a few people and go, and they get beat up, and they have to come back. God said, no. This is not going to happen. So now we'll get to the end of Moses' life. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 9. Moses knows that his life is coming to an end. And so he, the book of Deuteronomy is rehearsing all the things that he has taught them the years that he has been with them. And it has some really important things in here for us to note for ourselves as well before we go into the book of Joshua. There's several things that I'll be referring back to. Let me just read a part of uh, Deuteronomy 9. This is Moses addressing Israel. Hear, O Israel, you are now about to cross the Jordan to go in and dispossess nations greater and stronger than you with large cities that have walls all the way up to the sky. The people are strong and tall, Anakites. You know about them. And you've heard it said, who can stand up against the Anakites? But be assured today that the Lord your God is the one who goes ahead of you like a devouring fire. He will destroy them. He will subdue them before you. 
and you will drive them out and annihilate them quickly as the Lord has promised you. After the Lord your God has driven them out before you, do not say to yourself, the Lord has brought me here to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. No, it is not on account. It is on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is going to drive them out. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you are going to take possession of the land, but on account of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God will drive them out before you to accomplish what he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand then, that it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is giving you this good land to possess, for you are a stiff-necked people. Boy, how does that apply to us today? We are a stiff-necked people. And God doesn't do anything on our behalf because of our righteousness or because we deserve it or because we're special or because we have Bibles or because we come to church. God is fulfilling his promises because of who he is and because of his plan. If we are willing to be his people, then he is able to be our God. And that's what this is about. God is building a family. And family members need to learn to trust him because God reveals things about himself over time. God doesn't ever just download all that he is to any one group at any one time. He reveals things about himself when it is necessary, when it is time. And so you and I have to trust because there are many things that we're not going to know and we're not going to understand, and it shouldn't matter because it is our God that goes before us to take care of whatever is there on our behalf. Our God is responsible for securing the kingdom for us. He, we are not securing the kingdom for us. He is securing the kingdom for us. And he is securing a kingdom for a holy and righteous people that choose to walk in his ways. Even though they are stiff-necked and selfish and wicked, that they Walk away from that in favor of righteousness. That's why you're here. You understand who you are. You are poor, blind, and naked. Without God, that's who we are. With the Lord, we are rich, we have sight, and we wear righteous, his righteousness. What a place to be. So Awesome. And so Moses tells the people, sets them straight as to what it's, what's going to happen. Go over just a few chapters to Deuteronomy 31. He sets before them life and death. He's gone over all of the law. He's referred them back and reminded them all. He's done everything that he can do. And he knows that the Lord is going to take him up on the mountain and separate him from the people, and he's going to die there. Verse, uh, chapter 31. Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel. I am now 120 years old. I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan, the Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you will take possession of the land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said. And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Now, these next two words are the 
part of the message today and next week in part two. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For your Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him, In the presence of all Israel, be strong and courageous. For you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their forefathers to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. God had been preparing Joshua for this job the whole time that they were waiting to go into the promised land remember 40 years you're going to stay here until all the people that committed adultery against me by banding against me until they are all gone Joshua has been being trained up to lead this group of stiff-necked followers into the promised land And he's told to be strong and courageous. Why would Joshua be told to be strong and courageous? He had great courage. He had been given great victory. Remember in the time when they were fighting and Moses' hands were held up and he led and killed the Amalekites with the sword? He had stood up in the face of Israel against the other ten spies and said, No, what you're saying is not right. We can take the land. It's a good land. God's given us. He is going to give us the land. There's no need to be afraid. He was a warrior already. He was strong and courageous already. He loved the Lord. He was zealous for God. He walked in humility. He was totally happy to learn from Moses as Moses' aid. Yet we're going to see these words many times in the life of Joshua. Number one, being strong. Strength is attributed to absolute trust. Strength comes from trust. Be faithful. Trust your God. Is it enough for you and I to trust God today? Are you satisfied with just your trust today? Or does that trust need to go into tomorrow and into the next day? Yes. The fact that you've been trusting for 20 years does not guarantee that you're going to trust 21 years or 25 years. Be strong says be faithful. Keep being faithful. Don't stop being faithful. Your God will never leave you and never forsake you. You must trust him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your understanding, Joshua. You're going to have to trust God. There are going to be times you don't know what to do. There are going to be times that you're going to be afraid. You know why? Because humans get scared. It's part of who we are. Can you be brave if you're not afraid? If you see a little fire ant on the floor and you go and squish it, Am I going to say, that was so brave of you to do? No. You weren't afraid to go and squish that little ant. That's not bravery. Brave is when you do something in the face of danger. To have courage is to make a choice to persevere in the face of danger or extreme difficulty. Courage is a choice. Do you know that's why God says cowards are not going into heaven? It's not just something that you get. Oh, well, I'm just not a courageous person. None of us are. We are not courageous. We are given courage. We are given the ability to stand and face something difficult, scary, or something that is opposing us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can have courage to fight the good fight. Two things that Joshua is told, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. So let's go.
to the book of Joshua. Just a few more pages. You're almost there. To be a coward is to be ruled by fear. To be ruled by fear is to have a lack of trust. There is no trust. We are all going to be afraid of things. When God is asking us to allow him to change our hearts in whatever arena of our life, and right now there are things in, God's, in your life that God wants changed. There always is. There's always something. There's always an attitude adjustment that we need. There's always something we need to walk away from. There are always idols growing and creeping up in our lives that God wants us to recognize. There's always something because we have a carnal nature that's alive and well, and it never stops, and it doesn't sleep. It does not sleep. It is always ready to trip us up. So you and I need to trust the Lord so that when things that God asks us to do, we're afraid of, make us afraid, oh, I can't do that. I can't walk away from my job. I can't do this. Yes, you can. God will empower you to do it. You can be strong and courageous. Those two things go together, and every child of God needs to walk with, st with strength and courage because those two things add up to all that faith is, true trust in the Lord. Now here Joshua is, Moses has died. After the death of Moses, a servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. And one of the things that's neat to when I think about Moses' aid is all of the little things that God taught Joshua. There are many little things that we have to learn in life that might be tedious, gentleness, patience, lots of patience, kindness, many things that we have to learn on the road to what God is growing us into. And we can't skip those. Many times we look at the, the greats in the Bible and we think, oh, I wish I'd have been Abraham. I'd have, I wish I'd have been this. I wish I could be like this. God gives us the highs and lows, but there are many days where they just had to simply Trust and walk and trust and walk just the way that you and I do. One day when you face your Lord and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You will be an Abraham. You will be a Moses. You will be a David. You will be a Solomon because God does not show favoritism. Every single child is important. Remember, we're a body and every part is crucial. We can't say in, in the body of Christ, we don't need that leg, chop it off, we'll just hobble on one leg. We need every part. And so Joshua had learned in the small things. And he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then... You and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left so that you may succeed wherever you go. Do not let this book of...